Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, sorry for the hiatus, uh, but I'm back and I plan on releasing more videos soon. Uh, this video is going to be uh, basically going over a new free API that I found uh, browsing the internet. Uh, so basically what this is, and for all of you who aren't familiar with me, um, I'm a software engineer by trade, but I love the stock market um, and I love reading up on different investments. And I'm always trying to kind of further my expertise and knowledge by looking into different APIs and seeing what's possible with them. So as we know, Bloomberg has an API called Open Fiji, um, and there are dozens, if not hundreds of other APIs out there that people use. Um, Interactive Brokers has another one, but unfortunately, most of these, if not all, cost something to the end user, right? Well, not really anymore with this API. Uh, 12 data is really, really interesting and gives you a lot of functionality that other APIs, even the Yahoo Finance API, which went defunct in about 2017, did not give you. Um, and I'm going to go through some of the different endpoints you can use and what we can do with some of the data as well. So hopping into 12 data's documentation, we can see Right off the bat, uh, we get some pretty decent documentation and links on all sorts of stuff we can do with the API. Um, so I'm going to start with the authentication piece here. Obviously, with most APIs, you need to authenticate. Now, this can be different from API to API, but uh, you're going to have to obtain an API key. Um, I've already went through this, and for a lot of these requests, I'm going to use the demo API key uh, just to kind of explain how some of the data looks. Uh, but this is really, uh, I think, self-explanatory, and you guys can go off and create your own API key if necessary. Uh, moving on, uh, we can use uh, batch requests in this API, which is pretty cool. Um, now, if we uh, think back to the Yahoo Finance API with some time series data, uh, we know that it was pretty easy to obtain time series data. and right about now with any sort of free APIs, it hasn't been as easy ever since that went defunct. Um, with this batch request API, um, we can use all sorts of different batch requests on time series data, right? And technical indicators, which I don't really do much with technical indicators, but that's really cool that you can do that in the first place. And before I move on, I should also say that with most APIs, you have certain limits. Um, and even as a premium user, you're under certain limitations too. So uh, you're limited to 120 symbols per request. And I know that probably half of the people watching this will say, well, I need a thousand plus and I don't know uh, what to tell you. <laughs> you can find another way to get a thousand symbols, but for this, we're going to be using 120. Um, and yeah, everything that's going to be outputted is in JSON format too, which is nice because we can use any sort of JSON client we want and any programming language to work with this, um, which is really nice. So I'm going to click on an already pre-constructed URL for a batch request. We can see that uh, we have a comma delimited string of Apple, Microsoft, and the Euro USD FX rate, Starbucks, Nike, and with an interval of one minute, two, um, which is pretty cool that we can mix in uh, foreign exchange currencies and uh, equity securities as well. So we can have an arbitrary order uh, of stocks, crypto, ETFs, and indices in here as well. Um, and we can also specify different intervals too, which is cool. Uh, with Yahoo, I remember, it because I'm just comparing this to the last known free API that was this good, um, you really weren't able to have an, an interval with one minute time frequencies in there for free, that is usually paid for data. Either that or you're gonna be web scraping it somehow or finding an, another illegal way to do that. I mean, but with this, it's pretty awesome. I mean, we have everything we ha we need uh, on a minute by minute timestamp, right? We have an open, high, low, close, and volume listed as well, um, which is really nice. So we could probably play around with the interval and different uh, securities as well. So if I look at the metadata here, we have Apple, a one minute interval, and I'll collapse this JSON. Uh, also, I'm using an extension for my Firefox browser too, 
uh, and that's why it's showing up so pretty because <laughs> JSON normally does not show up like this in the browser. So let's check the foreign exchange currencies as well. That's This is really cool. Um, you can definitely build a lot of applications around this uh, so long as the API is reliable, which it looks like it clearly is. Um, now we can go to parameters here, and we already specified that as well. Um, I'm going to hover over libraries too for a second, and it looks like they have a Python uh, library slash, slash uh, package and an Excel add-in, which is cool. I think uh, in the future, if more people are going to be building uh, different services around this. Uh, I'm sure you're going to see like R APIs and uh, Java APIs as well. Um, I'm sure clients for other languages too might be included in there as this grows, but um, it's cool that we have a Python API already. And you know I'm a huge fan of Python as well. Now if we look at some of the other endpoints and reference data actually, we can see that one thing that's really cool here as well is that we can uh, return an entire array of symbols uh, from the 12 data API. Uh, now this is actually really, really nifty because if you've ever uh, done anything where you're building an application with uh, that's tracking any sort of equity securities, right, or any sort of company, uh, having something that either gives you the list of symbols or QSIPs, which is an identifier, for a security uh, or an ISIN uh, is really, really paramount. Uh, basically, your application is not going to work right without it. And there's not a lot of stuff for free out here uh, like this as well. So if we click on the stocks endpoint right here, we can see that my browser is trying to format it and we get a status of OK, so a 200. Um, now, if we expand this, we'll wait for a second. And it takes a little while, I'm sure. Now let's go through some of the JSON. We have uh, different exchanges here included too. Wow, that's awesome. Um, so it's not just domestic uh, securities as well. So we get we get everything, and I'm sure we can filter this down too um, by modifying the URL. Yeah, we can right here, and we can download it as a CSV too, uh, which is really nifty as well. Um, so let's just click on an individual symbol right here. And it shows us the exchange country and type as well. And that's very, very nifty. Um, so we get a full list of symbols there. Uh, and as well as an ETF list too. Um, so this is basically going to return us an array of ETFs available, right? Uh, which is really nifty as well. I know a lot of people are tracking ETFs very closely uh, and doing a lot of research on them. So this would be pretty nifty to have in uh, any sort of arsenal where you're trying to track ETF data um, or get any sort of metadata on ETFs as well. And I'm sure this list is going to grow as the API grows in popularity as well. So we're looking at um, a total of 2,931 uh, ETFs, which is pretty great. Um, yeah, very cool. Interesting in the 12 data docs as well are the web sockets, uh, is the web socket section, excuse me. Uh, this I'm just going to brush over because probably for most end users of this that are just going to be looking to play with data, um, you're, you're probably not going to need this. This would be for a legitimate application, right? And if you don't know what a web socket is, then I'm probably not going to go over this in the scope of uh, this, this video, but very cool that they've implemented, they've implemented this as well. Um, and if you continue to peruse through the documentation, I also found the technical indicator section, which look at all these technical indicators that we can get data on. That is amazing. For a free API, um, that is absolutely incredible. And I'm sure they're only expanding this list. So if we go to, let's say, a simple moving average, or actually MACD is interesting. Um, so let's see what would be returned here. I'm just gonna go through the sample response. I'm not gonna post my API key here. Um, <laughs> so you guys can't get that. Uh, but we get a value returned for Apple and we get a MACD uh, value returned as well um, at different given timestamps, right? So we have a date and a time attached to it. Um, I'm assuming that we're looking at the New York time zone based on this. Uh, 
yeah, this is awesome. Um, to have this available in a free API is great because if you try to implement this yourself um, by routinely calculating different symbols, uh, moving average or simple moving averages and other technical indicators, it's a hassle and it is abs an absolute nightmare to go through, take it from me. Um, so these guys have definitely done it right. <laughs> so if we scroll back up, we can also see we get a fundamental section too. Um, and I know given the current market right now, at least in the US, uh, earnings are a big source of commotion. And I think, I mean, personally, are a big mover in the market. Uh, and with this data you have right here, um, we can get really simple and concise numbers on earnings per share estimates, what the actual amount was, um, and, and different data based on that. So that's also very, very neat. And again, a lot of times this data is not going to be free, and these guys have provided it for free. So shout out to the, to the 12 data guys. Um, this is tremendous. And I think that any retail investor, this API is simple enough to use too. And if you wanted to build an application around this API for developers like myself, right? Um, this provides you with the functionality that the Yahoo Finance API did, um, which is no longer around. So when, that, when the Yahoo API uh, went defunct, a lot of people's applications just crapped the bed um, and stopped working, right? Because all of this data that is that is very reminiscent of how concise this data was and just what you need basically nothing crazy where you know you need to pay a giant bloomberg type fee to access it um you'd have data like this and just a bunch of applications could be built over it so i really really recommend this api guys just to check out um very cool and i'm sure later on i'll be using it for applications that i'm going to build in the future as well um, and yeah, again, shout out to the 12 data API, uh, guys for creating this. This is awesome. Um, but that does it for me today. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments and don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe as well. Bye. Have a good one.